Well, new at six tonight, as people across the nation learn about the corruption of the gun trace task force inside the Baltimore Police Department. Through the HBO show, We Own This City, a Baltimore man hopes the show leads to more than just an entertained audience. Yeah, Marquis Dukes says he spent five years in prison after being falsely accused by officers on that task force. And he spoke with WMAR 2 News' Kendall Green. And Kendall, he tells you it is time for his conviction to be overturned. Yeah, good evening, J Man Kelly. It's long overdue. He spent time behind bars and he won't ever get back. And it's produced obstacle after obstacle in his effort to regain control of his life. Now that there are reports and a TV show validating his experiences, he says the evidence for once is backing up his side of the story. On days like today, you can find Marquise Dukes hard at work, doing a job he's proud of, because it wasn't the easiest journey to get to this point. Before I got this job now, I was turned down like nine times, like nine times. I would get the job and then the background check would come back. Uh, they can't get you because of the felony on your record. Last Monday after work, he joined the nation, watching HBO's premiere of We Own This City. You guys know who I am? Years before the country would learn the officers' names, their reputation dominated the neighborhood where he grew up, namely Detective Daniel Herschel. And it was just like a, you know, like a mythical type of figure growing up. Don't let Herschel see you. Don't let Herschel catch you. He'll beat you up. He'll chase you and beat you up. Eventually, in 2007, Dukes and Herschel would meet face to face. At this time, I'm a teenager. I'm around like 16 years old. Dukes says the group of officers lined them up on the street and began searching them. That's when those rumors he heard before became his reality. We took one of my friends and he put the flexi cuffs on him and he went in the back of his trunk. And you can see in his trunk that he had drugs in his trunk. You get what I'm saying? He took a gun out of his trunk and put it in my friend's hand. You get what I'm saying? And then he took the gun and put it back in the trunk and closed the trunk and said, now I got you for a murder if I want to. After that encounter, Duke says Herschel would arrest him several more times, each scenario mirroring the other. He says they'd pull up in a neighborhood, conduct searches, and would plant drugs on their victims. And the most recent arrest was in 2013. He finds some drugs inside of an apartment building, probably about 100 feet away from him, 100 feet away from him. So he says, you're going to jail for it. So I'm like, it's not mine. He like, give me a reason why I shouldn't lock you up. And I don't want to hear you're a good guy. I said, you shouldn't lock me up because it's not mine. Minutes later, he says officers produced a handgun on that same scene. They come out and show me the handgun. They say, now you sure you don't know anybody? I said, I don't know anything. Lock me up. I get the central bucket. I got a drug charge. I got a gun charge. And eventually I go to court. I got a public defender, can't afford a lawyer. Dukes pled no contest to avoid going to jail for decades and served five years as a result. Though he maintains his innocence, that charge on his record still just as costly. The sentence was five years. It was up in 2018. I can't get that off my record until 2028. So I'm just like stuck like this. I can't put my name on a lease or nothing. I'm not a dirty cop. As the country watches those officers plot unfold in the weeks to come, Dukes is filled with mixed emotions, watching a crucial point in his life entertain others. But he hasn't lost his hope. I pray every night. I pray every night that somebody would listen to me. Hopefully with this exposure, you get what I'm saying, that maybe, you know, I can get the conviction over time and I can have a fresh start and start, you know, doing some things in my life that I haven't been able to do. Duke's hope is that he and several people who were victimized by GTTF get justice, as he just said, in the form of an overturned conviction. Now, that will require a move by the state's attorney's office. In the meantime, he's glad that the corruption detailed in the series is being brought to light. Kelly? All right, great story. Thanks a lot, Kendall. Now, the city, in the meantime, has paid out millions of dollars in settlements to Baltimoreans who had encounters with the GTTF. We went through years worth of Board of Estimates agendas and the amendments to get the exact number. $14,570,073.27. That taxpayer money was paid out across 32 separate cases, the highest payout going to Umar Burley and Brent Matthews, who got nearly $8 million. The settlements appeared in Board of Estimates meetings between August of 2020 and January of this year. Now, the second episode of We Own This City airs tonight. The series is based on the Baltimore Police Department's Disgrace Gun Trace Task Force 
There are six episodes. They will run every Monday through the month of May on HBO Max at 9 p.m. 